Hi guys, today's video is on two concepts, um, powers of monomials and geometric applications with these. Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what's called the power rule. So the power rule is when you have a variable raised to some power. So you can see in this example that we have x to the a power. And we are raising that to the power of b. So when you have a power raised to another power, you actually multiply those powers together. So we would have x to the a times b power. So like I said, I always say, to kind of keep this rule straight, when you have a power raised to another power, we multiply. Okay, so a power raised to another power means to multiply. So here's one power, and it's being raised to another power. So let's do some examples. Our first example says to do x squared to the fifth power. So notice here is our one variable, our power, and here is our other power. So we have a power to a power, so we multiply. So we're going to do x to the power of 2 times 5. So it would be x to the power of 10. So power to a power means to multiply. Our next example, we have m to the 7th power and n to the 4th power, and that whole thing is to the 4th power. So we're actually going to multiply this power into both of them. So we're going to have to do m to the 7 times 4 power times n to the 4 times 4 power. So then just multiply. 7 times 4 would make m to the 28 power, and 4 times 4 would make n to the 16th power. So we'll just leave it m to the power of 28 times n to the 16th power. So that's number two. Go ahead and try number three on your own. Keep in mind, there isn't an exponent written on our C. And when there isn't anything written there, it's assumed that there's a one there. So go ahead, that's like C to the first power and D squared or D to the second power. And we're cubing that whole thing. So go ahead and multiply that power of three in. Power to a power means we multiply. All right, it says um, for examples with coefficient, we have to raise the coefficient to the given power as well. And then we'll simplify the variables with the power rule. So let's do example four together. So we have 5x to the seventh power squared. This two has to go to the five and it has to go to the 7. So we're literally going to do 5 squared times, and then I have to do 7 times 2 because we have a power times another power. So 5 squared, that's like doing 5 times 5, so that's 25. And then 7 times 2 would make x to the 14th power. So our answer is 25 times x to the 14th power. All right, similar kind of thing here with number five. So I'm gonna have you try this one on your own. You have to multiply or distribute this five in. Again, keeping in mind, since they don't have an exponent on that y, it's like a one. So you're gonna have to do two to the fifth power, x squared to the fifth power, and y to the fifth power. So go ahead and try number five now. All right, let's do number six together. So I am gonna have to do negative two squared, and then I'm just gonna write it all out separate. I'm gonna have to do P to the fourth squared, so power times another power means I multiply, times Q, and then I'm gonna have to do the six times the two. So you have to distribute that power of two into everything. Now you have to be really careful. If you don't use parentheses when you're squaring something that's negative, your calculator will actually give you the wrong answer. So make sure you use parentheses. Or just think, what is negative two times negative two? You should be thinking positive four. 
your calculator will tell you it's negative four unless you use those parentheses. So make sure you use them or just use your brain. Okay, so negative two squared is a positive four. Then four times two would give me P to the eighth power. And six times two would give me Q to the 12th power. All right, go ahead and try number seven. Actually, let's do seven together. It's a long one. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do negative four to the fourth power. I'm gonna have to do C to the third power times four and D to the fourth power times four. So we distributed it into everything. So go ahead and use your calculator. Do negative four to the fourth power. You should get a positive 256. And if you weren't sure how to put that in a calculator, um, on your graphing calculator, if you hit parentheses, and then type your negative four, close your parenthesis, and then use the caret button um, that's right above the division symbol, and then hit the four, and you should get 256. So make sure you try along with me. Then C would be raised to a power of three times four is 12, and D would be raised to a power of four times four makes 16. So your answer is 256 C squared D to the 16th power. All right, go ahead and try number eight on your own. So you are going to make this three distribute into both your coefficient and your variable. Be careful when you raise negative three to the third power, make sure you use parentheses in your calculator. All right, on number nine. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 3 to the 1 half. So I'm going to do 1 half raised to the third power. A to the third power to another third power. I'll do 3 times 3. B would be 4 times 3. And C to the fifth power raised to the third power, I'd have to do 5 times 3. So again, in your calculator, I would do parenthesis 1 divided by 2 close your parenthesis, then that little caret button three, and hit math, enter, enter. You should get one eighth. A would be have a power of nine, since three times three is nine. B would be raised to a power of 12, since four times three is 12. And C would be raised to a power of 15, since five times three is 15. That is your answer to number nine. All right, for number 10 through 15, it says to simplify each expression completely. So let's go ahead and do number 10. This is gonna combine um, what you learned the other day with what we're doing now. So it's putting both concepts together. So we have x cubed times y cubed all to the third power times x times y squared. So notice here, we have our power raised to our power, right, in both cases. So we multiply when we have a power raised to a power. So distribute this in, and you would have x cubed times three, and then y cubed times three. That's just the first part, and then I'm just gonna rewrite this second part. So that would make three times three is nine, so x to the ninth and y to the ninth, times x y squared. So then remember we learned when you multiply exponents, you add them together. So now let's see what would go together. We have an x to the ninth and a plain old x. So since there isn't an exponent on that x, it's in refer like infer that that's a one there. So you'd have x to the first power. So x to the ninth times x to the first would make x to the tenth, because you do nine plus one. Then we'll have y to the ninth times y squared, or to the second power, and nine times two is 11. So your answer is x to the tenth power, y to the eleventh power. All right, let's try number 11 together. So we have plain old a cubed. I can't do anything with that. 
but I am gonna have to take this four in here. So I'm gonna have to do, that's like negative one a squared. And then I'm gonna have to take the four to the two and take the b to the one that is essentially here. So I'm gonna have to do negative one to the fourth power. Then a squared would be to do two times four. Then b to the first power, I'll also have to multiply by four. So all I did was multiply that four in. And I rewrote this like this was a negative one here. So we did negative one to the fourth, a squared to the first power, fourth power, and b to the first power times four. All right, so if we clean this up, again, in your calculator, do parenthesis, negative one. Close your parenthesis to the fourth power. You should get a positive one. Then two times four would make a to the eighth. And one times four would make b to the fourth. So now we have this. So now we can go ahead and truly multiply together. So we have an a cubed here and an a to the eighth here. So when we multiply with exponents, we really add them together. So three plus eight would make a to the 11th and then b to the fourth. And honestly, you do not have to put that one there. You will see a to the 11th, b to the fourth. And that is just fine, just like that. All right, let's try number 12. So first, we're gonna have to multiply or distribute this power of two in here. So I have to do negative two squared, a to the first power times b, and b to the second power times two. So that's everything being multiplied there. Then over here, I'm gonna have to do the same thing with this power of two. So I'm gonna have to do three squared, then I'm gonna have to do a squared times two, and b to the first power times a power of two. All right, so we'll clean it up. So negative two squared is four, one times two would make a squared, and two times two would make b to the fourth. So that's what's there. Three squared is nine. A would be to the fourth power, since two times two is four, and one times two is two, so b to the second power. So then now we can go ahead and multiply. So we'll have to do four times our nine, which is 36. Then we'll do a squared, times a to the fourth. So we're gonna add, that would make a to the sixth. Then we'll have b to the fourth and b squared, and four plus two makes six. So we'll have a b to the sixth. So our answer would be 36, a to the sixth, b to the sixth. All right, let's jump down and do 14 together. So we have two a squared, all to the third power, plus a to the fourth times three a squared. So we first are gonna take care of our power to a power and we will multiply. So we are gonna have to do two to the third power. Then I'll have to do a squared times the three because power to power means we multiply. So let's do this first. So two cubed is like doing two times two times two, which is eight. And then two times three would make eight times a to the sixth power. On this side, we do not have a power to a power. We just have two things being multiplied. So to multiply, remember, we just add. Also keep in mind, this is like a one in front of here. So when we go to multiply, we'll do one times three and get three. Then we have an a to the fourth times a squared. When you multiply with exponents, you really just add. So we'll do four times two and get six. Now, look at what happened here. We have an 8a to the 6th and a 3a to the 6th power. So we do have a like term. We haven't seen this yet. So this is the same thing. It's like having an 8x and a 3x. So think about it that way. If, if I said do 8x plus 3x, you would tell me that's 11x. So same thing here. We have an 8a to the 6th and an 3a to the 6th. So we have 11a to the 6th power. And that would be your answer. All right, let's go ahead and try 15. So we do have a power to a power here. We have a power to a power here, and we do not in our last part. So let's do the power to power first. 
So we do have to distribute that 4n. So I will do 3 to the 4th power times x cubed would be 3 times 4. And y to the 1st power, I'd have to do y to the 1st power times 4. So 3 raised to the 4th power is 81. 3 times 4 makes x to the 12th. 1 times 4 makes y to the 4th. So that's my first part. All right, over here I'm going to have to do minus 7 squared. Then I'll have to do x to the 5th to the power of 2. So I multiply. And y to the 1st power times a power of 2. So I multiply. 7 squared is 49. 5 times 2 would make x to the 10th power and 1 times 2 would make y squared. And then I still have this times x squared, y squared. It's not raised to a power, so there's nothing to do there. All right, we still can multiply these two together. So I'm just going to kind of rewrite this first part. So 81 times x to the 12th power, y to the 4th power. So then remember, when we multiply with exponents, we truly add them together. So this is like a 1 in front of here. So 49 times 1 is just 49. Then we have x to the 10th times x squared, and 10 plus 2 makes 12. Then we have y squared times y squared, and 2 plus 2 makes 4. So we have 81 x to the 12th, y to the 4th, minus 49 x to the 12th, y to the 4th. And look what happened again. We have a common denominator. Or not a common denominator, a common like like term. We have an x squared or x to the twelfth, y to the fourth, x to the twelfth, y to the fourth. So they're the same. So this would be like doing 81x minus 49x. These are the same. So you're gonna do 81 minus 49, and you get 32 x to the twelfth, y to the fourth. And that would be your answer. All right, so go ahead and flip it over to the back. These are all geometric applications. So it says to find the perimeter and area of each figure below. So let's kind of recap here. Remember, perimeter is when you add up all the sides. It's the total length around your object. So add up all the lengths or the sides. And your area is the amount inside. So if it's like a rectangle or a square, we would do length times width um, and so on. So we'll get to that. So on 16, it says to find the perimeter and area. So you have to know that in a rectangle, right, these sides are the same length. So if that's 12x, this is 12x. And the left and right side are the same length. So if that's 5x squared, this is 5x squared. So to find the perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides. Now, in elementary school, you would literally write 5x squared plus 12x plus 5x squared plus 12x. In high school, a lot of times the way you see it is 2. We have 2 of what? We have 2 5x squareds, right? So we can write 2 times 5x squared plus we also have 2 12x's. And then we'll solve that. So 2 times 5x squared would make 10x squared. And 2 times 12x would make 24x. So this is just your perimeter. Those are not like terms, so you cannot add those together. All right, so since this thing is a rectangle, to find the area, we're going to do the length times the width. So the length is 12x, and your width is 5x squared. So area equals length times width. So we said the L was 12x and the W is 5x squared. All right, so when we multiply these, we're going to have to do 12 times 5, which is 60. And then this is like an x to the first power. So we'll do x to the first power times x squared. 
we are multiplying, which means we add these exponents. So one plus two makes three. So your answer would be 60 X to the third power. All right, so for this triangle, let's find the perimeter first. So remember, perimeter means to add up all the sides. So we are gonna add up all the sides in this one. So we have four A squared B plus 10 A squared B plus three AB. So in order to combine like terms, they need to literally be identical. So notice our four has an A squared B and our 10 has an A squared B, but the three just has an AB. So that's not identical. So we can only combine these two together. So four plus 10 would make 14 A squared B then I don't have anything to add this onto, so it's just gonna kinda go on the end. So your perimeter would be this entire thing. 14a squared b plus three ab. All right, so now to get the area. Remember to find the area of a triangle, you do one half the base times the height. So the base is the bottom and the height is how tall the thing is. So let's plug those in. So we'd have area equals one half times three AB, because that's my base, times my height, which is four A squared B. Let's multiply first. All right, and I'm gonna wait to do the fraction at the end. Let's just multiply these two things. So we'll just kind of let the, the fraction one half hang out for now. Okay, so three times four would make 12. You have an a to the first power and an a squared. When you multiply, you add. So that would make a cubed. You have a b to the first power and another b to the first power. So one plus one makes two. So now we know that half, oopsies. We know that half of 12 is six. So I could say my area is six a cubed times b squared. And that would be your answer. Let's jump down and do number 20. So for these, we're just finding the area. So remember the area of a circle is pi times our radius squared. And they tell me my radius is this three x y cubed. So I'm gonna put that in for my radius. So it would be area equals pi times three x y cubed squared. Cause you do your radius to the second power. So we're gonna to have to distribute this power of two in. So when we do that, we'll have to do three squared times x squared times three times times y to the power of three times two. All right, so let's clean it up. Three squared makes nine. X squared is just X squared. And then three times two would make y to the sixth power. And we're just gonna leave our answer kind of like that. We'll leave it with pi. So I'm gonna rewrite it nine pi X squared y to the sixth. And that would be your answer. All right, that concludes your video on the power rule and geometric applications of the power rule and multiplying monomials. If you have any questions, let us know.